Assalamu alaikum. Are you looking for a reliable source to learn more about Islam? Look no further. Our app, One Islam TV, is the perfect solution for you. Get access to a wide range of informative and engaging content in Islam right at your fingertips. Download our app now and start your free trial. Now here's the thing about the right place and the right time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says that from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he has made his times and his places known to you. He's made his time and his places known to you. You know exactly when the best times are. You know the window that you need to be present. You know the place that you need to be present. You know the reward of coming earlier. You know the reward of doing more. Allah in his excellence to you, in his ihsan to you, doesn't leave you guessing. He gives you very limited windows and times that have unlimited mercy in terms of their potential. And the, the most in terms of variance you're going to see is for example, the last 10 nights of Ramadan. But I think we can all agree that for a lifetime of good deeds, having 10 nights to exert ourselves in is a pretty good deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from the mercy of Allah is that He lets you know what His places are, and what his times are, leaving to you only the decision to show up, to be present. And there is an element of coming early, and there is an element of being present. Coming early, you know, if you think of Sha'ban like practice and Ramadan like the game, all right, if you don't show up to practice, eventually that lack of practice is going to show up in the game as well. The lack of coordination, something's going to go wrong. The talent will give out. The equivalent of the talent might be your natural spirituality. Maybe you're a person who immediately gets into the zone in Ramadan. You read Quran right away. You get into the Salah. You immediately embrace Taraweeh. But eventually the faultiness of you not having used the month of practice will show up. A lack of coordination at the bare minimum. So there's getting early and there's being present. Now I wanted to give this a teskia checklist, if you will. What does Ihsan look like? What does excellence look like? when it comes to showing up at the right time, at the right place. There are four things. Number one, it's doing while others are not doing. Doing while others are not doing. Number two, it's doing what isn't expected of you in your circumstances. Number three, it's doing more of what everybody else is doing. Number four, it's doing quicker and with more enthusiasm what everybody else is doing. So I'm going to break these down inshallah ta'ala, but I wanted to give you the list of four things from the very beginning. What does it mean to have your time to shine in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And where does Sha'ban fall into this in terms of an attitude? The first one is doing while others are not doing. And I'm going to use the ibadat, the acts of worship that are very familiar to us. Prayer. Prayer. The Prophet ﷺ specifically said, Sallu bilayli wa nasuniya. Pray at night while other people sleep. It's expected that people are going to pray five times a day. But when everybody else is sleeping, you have an opportunity to wake up and to pray and to distinguish yourself. And SubhanAllah, you can imagine that at one point on the face of this earth, there were three people that were praying Qiyamul Layl. The Prophet ﷺ, his wife Khadija radiallahu anha, and then his son-in-law Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anha. This is a famous narration. At one point on earth, imagine the angels going around at night looking for the people praying Qiyam. There is only one household in the entire world that was reading the Qur'an at night. But now that it's all available to us, who are the people that wake up and pray while other people sleep? Who are the people that give when other people withhold? Right? So there are moments of charity, avenues where people will give of their time, give of their wealth, while other people withhold. And so they shine in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they literally, I mean, if you, if you think about good deeds lighting up a room, there are people there that shine, right? As those that stand out from the rest and what they're willing to give of their volunteerism, of what they're willing to do in terms of their time and their wealth, right? Because when Adam alayhi salam, as the scholars mention, looked at his children, there were lights that were shining. One of them being the Prophet David, Dawood alayhi salam. He was a shining light, shimmering in the darkness. 
So your time to shine is giving when other people withhold. Your time to shine is fasting when other people don't traditionally fast. And SubhanAllah, you'll find a connection with all three of these things. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioning the angels celebrating the household where someone is awake at night while other people are sleeping. The angels even calling from the gates of heaven to the one that is giving, saying, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa, O Allah, give to the one who gave. And he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in another narration at Tirmidhi, that when someone fasts while other people are eating around them, this is not talking about Ramadan per se, right? Usually this is talking about a voluntary fast. When someone fasts while other people around them are eating, the angels keep on praying on that person until they finish their food. So they're getting their share of nutrition, you're getting your share of prayers from the angels upon you. Why? Because you're shining in that place. You're the one person that's fasting there. And the angels recognize that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the angels to give that a special recognition. So that's doing while other people are not doing. The second one is doing what isn't expected of you in your circumstances. So giving وَتَخْشَ الْفَقْرِ You give even when you fear poverty, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. So beloved to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. You forgive even when you're not expected to forgive. You pull back from an argument even when you have every right to go, get into an argument. تَرَكَ الْمِرَاءَ وَإِنْ كَانَ مُحِقًا It's alright, let it go. You do what's not expected of you in your circumstances. Allah Azza wa looks at that and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentions وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah loves those people, right? They do even what's not expected of them, so they shine there. No one expected you to give at that point. No one expected you to forgive. No one expected you to exert yourself. But Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala saw what you did there. The third thing is doing more of what others are doing. So this is a quantitative element of shining. Everybody's doing the same thing, but some people are doing more of it. Okay? So when it comes to prayer, there are nawafil, there are voluntary prayers. The gate of salah to paradise, the gate of prayer to paradise is not meant for those who pray five times a day, you know, particularly. It's for those who add to that, right? They do more of it. Those who will enter through Babur Rayyan are not just the people that fast in Ramadan. The gate of Rayyan, of paradise, is the gate of fasting. It's for those people that especially fast. So everybody fasts, but they fast more, right? So they have a specific gate. That's not just for people of Ramadan. Or those that give extra charity, Babu Sadaqa, the gate of charity to Al Jannah, is not the gate of Zakat. It's not just the gate of paying your mandatory charity. It's those people that give extra charity and they exert themselves. So doing more of what everybody else is doing. And the fourth one is doing quicker and with more enthusiasm what others are doing. So it has a qualitative element to it, a qualitative element to it. Part of that is the hastening to what others are lazy towards. So I give people the spectrum, right? Or not me giving it, we find it from the Prophet Sallallahu prayer to the prayer of the hypocrites. The Prophet Sallallahu was described that when the time of prayer came, wathaba, he jumped up like a lion, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, he jumped out of his bed. Aisha radiallahu anha saying that he was so present at home, but once the call for prayer happened, as if he didn't even know us anymore, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Enthusiastic, so ready for the prayer at all times. Like the adhan immediately triggered that response, a very predictable response from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's wathaba. Now, in the same prayer, there are the hypocrites. But, qamu kusala, when they got up for prayer, got up so lazy, wudu was improper, like, ah, just pulled themselves to it. They dragged their feet to it. All of us are somewhere between wathaba and qamu kusala. Somewhere in that spectrum, we fall between jumping up like the Prophet ﷺ and dragging our feet like a hypocrite. May Allah protect us from hypocrisy and allow us to strive to be more like our Prophet ﷺ. So it's a qualitative element too, and Allah sees that. Allah sees the prepared heart. Allah sees that excitement from a person. The Prophet ﷺ mentioning within the jama'ah, he said If they knew the blessing of the first row, they would have cast lots for it. 
If they knew what it meant to be from Ashab al Saf al Awwal, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to strive to be from Ashab al Saf al Awwal, the people of the first row. Allahumma ameen. And that doesn't mean jumping over people and getting to the first row. That means getting early to the salah, something we can strive for. There's a qualitative element to that. And being there quickly, looking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are so many examples, Salatul Jumu'ah being one of them. The Prophet I'm saying the one who came in the first hour, then the one who came in the second hour, then the one who came in the third hour. And he's paralleling to that a specific reward. So those that came first got the greater reward, those that came second got the lesser reward, and so on and so forth. Now, what does this have to do with Sha'ban, the month of Sha'ban? And I said at the outset for a reason, just like Ramadan, by the way, appeals to a particular heart, Sha'ban appeals to a particular mindset. Usam ibn Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu, narrates, as well as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that there was no month that we would see the Prophet sallallahu fasting outside of Ramadan as much as Sha'ban. It was as if he was connecting them sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, they say that a, a perfect practice is the closest you'll get to a perfect performance, right? Like to see him sallallahu alayhi wa fasting all of Sha'ban to a point that you could count on one hand perhaps what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa might not have fasted in the month of Sha'ban is inspiring. But here's the thing, there's not a single khutbah where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is pushing the community to it the way that he was fasting it sallallahu alayhi wa Here's where the narration continues and it gets very interesting. They asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, ذَلِكَ شَهْرٌ يَغْفُلُ النَّاسُ عَنْهُ بَيْنَ رَجَبٍ وَرَمَضَانٍ That's a month that people become heedless in regards to. They neglect it. Because it's between the sacred month of Rajab and the greatest month of Ramadan. So people toss it to the side. And he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam تُرْفَعُ فِيهِ الْأَعْمَالُ إِلَى رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ and also the deeds are presented to Allah in this month. And I like that my deeds are presented to Allah when I'm in a state of fasting. But the first reason he gives Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the interesting one. The particular one of this khutbah. It's a time of ghafl. It's actually a time of heedlessness. It's a time where most people are not taking their particular journey to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that seriously. It's a time that you rarely find people exerting themselves in these good deeds. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying, that's the best time to shine. That's the best time to stand out. When other people aren't paying attention, that's when you pay extra attention. Because you stand out amongst the crowd at that point. And Abu Bakr al-Razi rahimahullah commented, قَالَ مَا أَقْبَحَ الْغَفْلَ عَنْ طَاعَتِي مَنْ لَا يَغْفُلُ عَنْ بِرِّكِ وَمَا أَقْبَحَ الْغَفْلَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ مَنْ لَا يَغْفُلُ عَنْ ذِكْرِكَ He said, رضي الله عنه, مَا أَقْبَحَ الْغَفْلَ How repulsive is heedlessness. عَنْ طَاعَةِ مَنْ لَا يَغْفُلُ عَنْ بِرِّكَ A person who becomes heedless in regards to the worship of the one who never stops showing you kindness. And he said, وَمَا أَقْبَحَ الْغَفْلَ And how repulsive is heedlessness. عَنْ ذِكْرِ مَنْ لَا يَغْفُلُ عَنْ ذِكْرِكَ how repulsive is heedlessness in regards to remembering the one who never forgets you. Ghafla can be sinful, heedlessness can be sinful. And sometimes it can just be complacency. But what we should be doing in this month is competing for Allah's pleasure when most people are not even paying attention to it. And that's something you have to ask yourself, how can I push myself to do something that other people are waiting for Ramadan to do? How do I exert myself now as practice for Ramadan, but also in honoring a particular time that other people are not honoring? As Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah said, Ramadan is a time where everyone does ibadah, but your ibadah in Sha'ban is a time where you really show that you want the rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want the pleasure of your Lord. And this was a mindset of the companions. So for example, one of the narrations, some of the companions, كانوا يستحبون إحياء ما بين العشاءين بالصلاة. They used to love to worship between the two Isha's, the two night prayers. What are the two night prayers? Maghrib and Isha in Hadith literature. So they would stay in the masjid between Maghrib and Isha, this group of companions, because they said, most people go home and come back for Isha. Let's see if we can take advantage of this time. And the Prophet Sallallahu coming out so proud of those young men that came to the masjid and they stayed between Maghrib and Isha, 
worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the next salah because they said that's a time where people become heedless. That's my time to shine. When you go to the marketplace, the best dua that you can find or one of the best duas is dua as-suq, the dua of the marketplace. Why? Because most people are not thinking about supplication when they walk into the marketplace. Try it next time you go on amazon.com. Right? Your mind is in a different place when you start looking at things and you're shopping. And for you to remember Allah at that point, here's a million good deeds for you instead of whatever it is that you're going to get from this particular shopping. Now, the Quran in particular. Ramadan is Shahrul Quran. Ramadan is the month of Quran. But do you know what the Tabi'een, what the righteous generation used to call Sha'ban? They used to call it Shahrul Qurra, the month of the reciters. So they called Shahrul Ramadan, Shahrul Quran, the month of Ramadan, the month of Quran, and they called the month of Sha'ban Shahrul Qurra, the month of the reciters, because only the reciters recite in Sha'ban. And if you could practically say to yourself, I expect to recite this much in Ramadan, I'm going to do half of that in Sha'ban, or even a fourth. But I'm going to start carving out this time every day, and I'm going to read this many pages. And in Ramadan, I expect to make this times two or times whatever, this is your opportunity to shine and your opportunity to put yourself forward. And finally, as Al-Hafidh ibn Rajab rahimahullah said, that part of this is also the qualitative element, trying to hide your good deeds. Ihsan, excellence. In Ramadan, everyone is fasting, everyone's praying, there's a, there's a public virtue here. In Sha'ban, he says that the Sahaba and the, 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 the Salaf, the righteous predecessors, what they would do is they would try to hide their fasting in Sha'ban. And that's one of the wisdoms perhaps that the narrations about the Prophet ﷺ fasting all of Sha'ban only come from his family. They only come from Aisha, Usama ibn Zayd and the people that were in his household sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, إِذَا أَصْبَحْتُمْ صِيَامًا فَأَصْبِحُوا مُدَهَّنِينَ he said, if you wake up and you're fasting in Sha'ban, go out looking fresh, you know, have your, your cologne on, have your perfume on, whatever it is, don't let people in on it. Because that's the qualitative element as well, is that I'm trying to shine with some of these secret deeds that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know about. Because these are not times that the public expects certain good deeds of you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to shine when we do what others are doing, and when we do when no one else is doing, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to drive our hearts, our thoughts, our limbs to please Him in Sha'ban and to please Him in Ramadan and to attain His special reward in His special times and places and to never be deprived of His always special mercy. Allahumma ameen. Introducing the One Islam TV app. The ultimate destination to learn about Islam with hundreds of educational videos, lessons, and documentaries. Experience our seven YouTube channels in one place. All content is music free. Download the One Islam TV app now from the Apple or Google Play Store today. Mm -hmm.